Well, welcome back. Uh, we are looking at uh, chapter five, and we're looking at uh, ankylosaurs. Uh, we looked at the stegosaurs last time. Uh, so here is uh, snap more uh, the uh, cladogram that you guys are familiar with, and in this cladogram, of course, we have dinosauria. And uh, do you remember what the uh, synapomorphy was for dinosaurs? So think about it. Uh, it was the perforated acetabulum, okay, which was this hole right here in between the uh, pubis, the uh, ischium, and the ilia, or the ilium over here. So you have that hole that goes right through, um, and you could you know, put your finger through, it's completely perforated. Unlike a human uh, hip area we looked at, which which is basically closed up. So that was the synapomorphy for dinosauria, and then we go to ornithischians, and uh, for ornithischians, uh, the synapomorphy was the predentary bone. Uh, it was the uh, backward facing pubis, which is right here, so it's facing backwards. Uh, and uh, we had a few other features as well, the palpable bone and some teeth, but the main ones that I want you to know are the uh, backward facing pubis, that's very important, as well as the predentary bone. Those two things are what really mark this group um, as their own distinctive group. And remember that in all cladograms, um, all of these, everything down here is an ornithischian, okay? So remember this is a big group and the synapomorphies that separate that group out, which is the predentary bone and the, the palpable bone and the backward facing pubis, uh, they, uh, they uh, underscore the entire group, which means all of these members underneath that have those traits. It's just that as we go further in the group, uh, different animals add different traits, which in are interpreted as an evolution of a new trait. Okay. So we looked at Lesothosaurus, uh, which was a basal ornithischian, and then we're in Genosauria. And again, that's another big group, which means cheek lizard. And that was the synapomorphy for that group, was that they had those big cheek muscles. And of course, that broke, breaks into Thyreophora and Seropoda. Thyreophora meant armor bearer. And so that was the synapomorphy for this group that had rows of armor. And then that breaks into Stegosauria and Ankylosauria. We looked at Stegosauria last time. And the snap morph for that was the big plates on the back. And we're going to look at Ankylosauria today. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Uh, first of all, just review what is an ornithischian. And so again, as I said, an ornithischian uh, has to have the uh, backward facing pubis bone and it has to have the predentary bone. All right. Um, and uh, there are other features like the palpable bone and the teeth, but those two are probably the major ones. And so here are a group of ornithischians. We've got a stegosaur, we've got a hadrosaur at the top. Uh, we've got uh, our triceratops on the right. You're probably familiar with Pachycephalosaurus, which we're gonna do next week. And then Ankylosaur uh, in here as well, which we're gonna have a look at today. Uh, remember, uh, again, it's always good just to keep uh, emphasizing the backward facing pubis bone. And in the other group, the Sariscians, uh, they have the forward-facing uh, uh, pubis bone. And of course, in the other group, the Sariscians, that's where we meet T-Rex and the feathered dinosaurs and, uh, and Archaeopteryx and things like that. Okay, so uh, what is an Ornithischian? Again, just keep emphasizing there's that predentary bone, which we already looked at. Uh, we've got that pre-maxilla area, which doesn't have any teeth in it, which I forgot to mention, but again, it's not as important as the predentary bone. There's the palpable bone, but then that's not as important as the predentary bone and the backward facing pubis. Okay, uh, so we're in Thyreophora. Thyreophora is another grouping, and uh, it means armor bearer. And uh, that's the synapomorphy for this group, as we talked about. Uh, when we looked at the uh, stegosaurs. And uh, as I also said, you do not have to know any of this stuff in here. These are other groups. As you click on Thyreophora, imagine it's a link. It opens up the Russian nesting doll kind of situation. Um, and uh, I'm, you, you guys don't have to know about these other groups in here. Uh, but what you do need to know is these two groups here, Stegosauria and Ankylosauria. And of course, today we're looking at 
uh, ankylosauria. We looked at stegosauria last time. So ankylosauria, uh, this is the most uh, this is the most heavily armored of the dinosaurs. Has a ton of armor. It has the synapomorphy of the thyreophorans, which is the, uh, the the osteoderms and the armor that goes down the back of the body, just like ankylosaur does. Uh, the synapomorphy uh, for this particular group is the armored skull. Uh, so when you look at the skull here, it has a ton of armor on it. And so this thing was like a tank. Uh, really would have been a, uh, a difficult animal to try and kill. So that's the snapomorphy for this group. Uh, you find these animals uh, upper Jurassic through to the upper Cretaceous, so looking at a geologic column. Uh, remember, all of this is the Mesozoic, which is the age of the dinosaurs. And uh, so you would find them pretty much here to about here. So mostly in the Cretaceous is where we find them. Um, the fossils have been found on every continent, including Antarctica, Antarctica, so we say that they are global. And there are two basic forms. There is Ankylosauridae and Nodosauridae. So remember, when you hear uh, day, you need to be thinking, oh, that's a family. All right, that's a family grouping. And so Ankylosauridae, Nodosauridae, these are families. So uh, you need to be able to look at a word, uh, one of these uh, taxonomic words, and be able to tell the difference between uh, a species, a genus, and a family. Those three are really important. So let's have a look at Nodosauridae first. So Nodosaurids uh, are uh, not as, um, I don't know, not as armored, I suppose, as the ankylosaurs. So here is a, a Nodosaurid. And in these skulls that you're looking at, these two, so uh, this one and this one, these are nodosaurids. The rest of them are the um, ankylosaurids. And uh, the difference, uh, major difference uh, between the two being this jugal bone right here. So you can see that these ones all had a jugal bone, kind of like a horn that stuck out from the side of the face. Uh, yet the nodosaurids did not have that jugal bone. Uh, and other, another difference, uh, probably the biggest difference, is uh, no tail club. So the ankylosaurids from the ankylosauridae family had tail clubs, but the nodosaurids did not. And uh, there were lots of spikes around the shoulders on these nodosaurids, but the ankylosaurids didn't have a lot of big spikes around the shoulders. So this is probably one of the most famous nodosaurid uh, dinosaurs. Uh, this is a, uh, it's called Borelopelta, uh, and it is, of course, uh, part of that Ankylosauria uh, family. And uh, this one is, is, is just astonishing because of its preservation. Uh, so apparently this animal, uh, this is the way the story goes, fell into uh, some kind of, um, uh, vegetative material that allowed the animal, even though it was dead, allowed it to be preserved long enough for minerals to come in and replace all of the tissues and all of the bones. So what you're looking at here is stone, but the soft tissue is being preserved uh, in the sense that you can see all of its features. And this is just an astonishing uh, preservation. Um, this is a, a, a a paleontologist says this, Jacob Vinther, he's an expert and paleobiologist on coloration from University of Bristol, has studied the world's best fossils for signs of skin biomolecules like pigments. After four days of delicately scraping, even he was astounded. The dinosaur is so well preserved that it might have been walking around a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Vinther explained in an interview with Gresco, I've never seen anything like this. And truly, it is an astonishing state of preservation. Uh, so here is the head of this particular uh, dinosaur. And uh, I've gone ahead and put an eye in, uh, just because when you do that, it really brings this head to life. I mean, have a look at the preservation here. Uh, this, you can see its nose. You can see the scutes that it had in its head. So these are uh, like osteoderms or bone fragments that are in the skin. 
and they've all been preserved exceptionally well. Um, the, all of the original uh, soft tissue has been preserved in the skull, and it's it's like you're actually looking at the dinosaur. Uh, and if you were, I mean, this is the closest it gets. This is the best it gets. This is actually looking not a model here, but this is an actual dinosaur that you're looking at. So that's pretty cool. Here's another uh, picture. Again, I put an eye in there uh, for effect. Uh, but you can see it's got these uh, great big uh, horns um, that come out. And that are and osteoderms here that are exceptionally preserved. Again, uh, this is the dorsal area at the back. And uh, you can see uh, these carrot. Now these are uh, these will have a bone underneath them, but it's they're mostly made of keratin, which is what your fingernails are made of. Um, and that keratin has been astonishingly preserved. Um, same in here. You can see all these osteoderms um, that were covered in keratin um, all through the skeleton. I mean, look at this. Uh, the little pattern of where those uh, keratinized osteoderms were. So this is exceptional preservation of this animal. Okay, so let's move to the other group, which is the ankylosaurids, uh, the ankylosauridae. Um, and these were really, really heavily armored. You'll notice when you look uh, at the back of the animal, uh, as well as the head, because that's the snapomorphy for the group, um, lots and lots of armor. And then of course they have this tail glove back there as well. You do not want to mess with one of these animals. Um, uh, here is the, the, the tail club that was back there, uh, what weighed several hundred pounds, and uh, if that hits you, it would likely, well, it would kill you, uh, and certainly would be very damaging to a di another dinosaur. Uh, some things that mark this group off from the notosaurids, of course, is the tail club. You can see it has a tail club, the other group do not. Uh, also, it is heavily armored on the head, and the head's kind of like a triangular shape as well, whilst the notosaurids have kind of a, a thin, narrow head. And then there's the jugal bone right here, right? So these have this jugal bone that's kind of sticking out of the jaw. Um, and uh, the other thing would be a lack of spikes. So notice that the, uh, the notosaurids had a lot of spikes coming out of their shoulders. These have a lack of spikes. All right, here's a little video from uh, Jurassic Park where we get to see some ankylosaurs in action. Okay, so looking at some ankylosaur biology, um, when they uh, looked into the skulls of, these, of this particular group, they found that uh, the nasal passages were quite strange. Uh, they're actually quite contorted into bizarre passages. Uh, so if you look at these pictures, the arrow here points, it goes up the nasal passage, but then notice it just doesn't go straight through uh, to the throat. Uh, it actually kind of curls around a few times, and this one's even more bizarre, uh, where it goes up and it curls around quite a few times before it eventually comes out. And uh, so scientists think that perhaps this was for vocalization, uh, maybe for mate calling, something like that. Uh, so they don't really know, uh, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, this little video demonstration here sort of shows you what it kind of looks like in 3D. Okay, and let me just stop there quickly. What kind of uh, group is this? Is this a notosaur or an ankylosaur? Can you tell? Yeah, that jugal bone there should give it away, right? And the triangular shaped head. It is an ankylosaur, uh, ankylosaurid. So here you can see uh, kind of three dimensionally what that might look like. Note the very tiny brain right here. And that is also the case with the ankylosaurus as well, with the stegosaurus, I should say. 
Okay, here is a, uh, a video clip, uh, just kind of helping us understand maybe how these animals might have moved. Okay, so uh, just some creationist thoughts on this group. Um, it's, would, we would probably classify this as a single created kind uh, because, uh, uh, well, the two groups, ankylosaurids and notosaurids, although they're different, more than likely they diverged or evolved from a common ancestor, which was very similar to these. Um, and so what's interesting about this group, the same with the uh, stegosaurus that we saw is there are no really good transitions in the fossil record. They try to apply some transitions, but generally speaking, the group just turns up in the fossil record uh, fully formed, um, as does the Stegosaurus. So just uh, some interesting observations for us going forward. Okay, well, that does it for uh, today, another short lesson. Uh, we will see you next time with the uh, Pachycephalosaurus. Thank you.